Hi and welcome back to this new video. Today we will attempt to break the 3 Mark world record using this EVGA 980 Ti classified. And you might now think using a 980 Ti classified isn't that uh, like three, four, five year old graphics card. Indeed, you are right. But we will not try to attempt like Port Royal or Firestrike. We will try to break the record of 3 Mark 2001. A 20 year old 3D mark, which is a lot of fun to play around with. One of the benchmarks I absolutely enjoyed the most of my time of my overclocking career. And we will try to show you why this benchmark is very amazing and it's a lot of fun to play with. And yeah, we did some pre-testing with the 12900K, which also works with 3D mark 2001. Let's try what we can do and we will take you with our journey. Look at this mess. And that's because we already spent a full day Hey, Hi. Stefan is uh, back on board with us because we already did another video where we overclocked an AMD CPU, which was not a lot of fun. We thought it would be fun, but it wasn't. But that video will come later. First, let's get to this topic. Maximus Apex with 12900K, DDR5 memory sticks from Corsair, 6000C36, so some Hynix sticks which are also not the greatest clockers, but they're still good and much better than anything I can currently find on the market. And the 980 Ti. You might now wonder why we're using a 980 Ti and not something like a 3090 or like a 3080 Ti. The reason for that is quite simple because we have to run Windows XP to run 3D Mark 2001. And this is pretty much the last card you can somewhat install with Windows XP. It's not easy, but you can do it. And with like 3080, 3090, that's absolutely not possible. Surprisingly, it's not really a big issue to use the 12900K. We have to do some trade-offs, like get rid of the e-cores. You can use them, but yeah, the benchmark did not like the e-cores. That's why we had to disable them. But we will get to that all later. First, we will have to set up and not sure if we're going to clean up, but yeah, let's set up first. In BIOS, we had to change a few things. In system agent configuration, we had to force Gen 3 PCIe. Even though the card is naturally Gen 3, we still had to force it. Otherwise, it was an issue to install the VGA driver. And for CPU configuration, we disabled VMX and of course the E cores and also hyperthreading because I mean, XP has no clue what an efficient core is and then Initially, 3D mic was probably running on either an efficient core or on an HD core and the performance was really, really shitty. Long, long time ago, it's very awesome to see XP. The only thing I'm missing is the startup sound, but everything on this Windows is basically disabled, so no sound. As you can see, CPU-C 1.98 just boots up fine, no issues on XP. Just our overclock for whatever reason. It's not running on 5G as it's supposed to. We'll have to check that. Memory is running fine though, 6000 C36. So that's okay. And also GPU-C 980 Ti is correctly installed. It's running with 16 lanes, uh, 3.0 NVIDIA driver 368.81. Everything correctly installed, ready to go. So. LN2 mode active and load LN2 profile. It's pretty hilarious that 3D Mark 2001 is telling us that this CPU is not running MMX instructions, even though we are so much more developed right now. So it's still booting up. With 3D Mark 2001, it's pretty amazing. You have so many options. Well, in theory, I had options, but the system just crashed. Anyway, we are back. I just had to loosen some of the memory timings. What I like really about this benchmark is that you have these 21 subtests. It takes 10 minutes, but you only have to run these four main tests. And what is very nice is that if you go to custom, you can rerun the individual tests after you completed the full test and then like improve, let's say, the lobby high benchmark and then improve your overall score, which is really nice for tweaking. And it's running 1024 times 768 resolution. Yes, that's legacy. It's really funny in these subtests, it's just showing 999 FPS all the time. So we have never any uh, like indication if our run is good or not. We always have to wait until the end because the FPS in these tests is like somewhere, if, I don't know, 1,500 to 3,000 FPS. And then there's this like matrix style or is it Max Payne? I'm not even sure. 
but just, <laughs> just check these graphics. The setup is running pretty smooth right now, even though it's just running at 5.5, 195K, only at 5.5 gigahertz. I think that's not too bad, that's not too bad. And we're running like minus 110 right now, so it's just still just pre-testing. We already pre-tested this at AIO cooling and we had about, I think 187K, but we have to beat about 228K. A new day and also a new attempt because yesterday I think we spent about eight hours in total trying to get this to run. Pre-testing was fine, especially with AIO, like high memory frequency and everything was working out fine, was also giving good benefits in 3D Mic 01. But then when we decided to cool down the system, it always had issues memory training with 6000 C34. And now we will just swap to a different 12900K and try again. Maybe today we will have luck because it seems that 3D Mic 01 is benefiting quite well from higher memory clocks. And we are trying to beat because you might wonder, because we're using a 20 year old benchmark, but those results are not 20 years old. The current record is with 11900K clocked at like 6.8. So it's not that easy to beat. I think I should have called it new day, no luck, but at least we have some kind of progress. I just switched the board. You can see this is a retail apex right now because on the other board, for whatever reason, the VGA was just not detected anymore. But now it's getting better. The VGA is detected. We also seem to have fixed our memory issues. So it's getting better. Back at about 187K for our stock pre-testing setting. It's not stock, but it's like 5.2G and 4.3G cache. And uh, I think this should be better. So next step will be remount, CPU container, a bit of insulation and hopefully things will work out. Slowly but steady, at least we have the mark of 200K points. We were just performing all the different subtests at different clock speeds and uh, we're getting there, 217K now. We're getting closer and closer, 226K. And that's the previous record, 228, 858 points. That's where we want to be at. Ideally somewhere at like 230K. Yes! <laughs> ah, nice. And here it is, almost 230K, new world record in 3D Mark 2001. After two days of work, it's a big relief that it finally worked out now. Just we have to take the screenshot to make sure that everything is all right. And then it's good to upload on HWOT, but we will still try to improve it, obviously. Now that's a solid improvement. That's about 10K above the current record, which I think is uh, not as bad as what we've seen before. So that, that is really amazing. Very, very happy about this result. And our final result, almost 240,000 points in 3D Mark 2001. CPU was running at 6.9 GHz across all of the cores. Unfortunately, the Hynix kit let us down hard. And I'm not sure why, but this specific kit seems to have issues whenever we're running on cold, which is very, very strange because I used this kit for I don't know how many hours for all the different reviews, testing different game benchmarks, like even mem tests and everything. It is fully stable on ambient temperature, but whenever we cool down, and we tested this with a different CPU and also a different board, but it's always this kit. Whenever we use this under cold, we always run into issues. That's why we had to change to the Micron kit, but even with the Micron kit, we were able to get the 240K new world record in 3D Mark 2001. And since I just, I love this benchmark so much, there are so many good memories for me, good memories, um, related to the 3D Mark 01, especially I use it so much with GeForce 8 and that's why I really enjoyed it. And it's, it's just nice to see how nice this system still works with XP with the 12900K. However, I think there is still a lot of headroom for this kind of world record, at least with this type of setup. If you would place a very well binned memory kit in there, together with an extremely binned CPU, which can maybe run like 7.2, 7.3 gigahertz, you should be able to get this easily and I don't know, something between 250 and 260K. But others can work on that. Still happy that we got the result after two days of work and now it's Sunday afternoon and I can finally spend two hours on having a weekend.
Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.